Okay, we have here today another integral from the UNSW integration. Be 2020. This is from the runner-up round. We've got this integral from zero to one of this whole big mess right here. Okay, now to get started with this, what I want to do to kind of make this more manageable, I don't really know where to start, so let's kind of just find something we can work with that we can try to simplify it. And what I want to do is, I just want to start with, let's just start with this arctan thing. What I can do for this is, we'll just label this y. And so then that's going to give me an expression, y equals arctan square root of one minus x squared over x. But then taking tangent on both sides, I can rearrange this and we can say that tan of y is gonna be just equal to this, square root one minus x squared over x. And then with this, let's just use this to draw the triangle and see if we can get some more information. So doing that, our angle on this is gonna be y, so we have the angle here, y. And we know our two sides, it's gonna be for tangent, opposite over adjacent, so we're gonna have square root one minus x squared over x. Now with the Pythagorean theorem, you square this, you get one minus x squared. Square this, you get x squared. Add them together, you just get one. So we have for our third side, this is just one. Now looking back at our problem here, we can see if we look at this bigger thing, everything inside of the absolute value, all this here, this is actually gonna be just sine of y. But with the triangle, we can actually find that value for sine of y, we just want opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of y is just gonna be square root one minus x squared. So just like that, we have quite a bit of simplification because I can just take this and plug this in for my sine of y value and rewrite the whole integral. So we'll do that really quick. But then at this point, because we've got a square root here, this is always positive. So we can just drop these absolute value. We could have done it before, just noticing with our x value between zero and one, x is always positive. So this is always positive. So this is in the first quadrant. So we could have done it that way, but I think it's a little easier to do it this way. But now from here with this plus sign here, we can actually just take this and break this up into two integrals. And now from here, we can just cancel the one minus x squared here. So that's just gonna become one for this whole integral. And then this over here, I think we can actually do this with integration by parts. We'll use the DI method on this or tabular integration. So we'll try to squeeze in two columns over here. What I wanna do is I wanna integrate, we can kind of create a one here and we can integrate one over square root of one minus x squared because that's a well-known integral right there. And then the arc sine stuff will differentiate. So we'll just put this stuff right here. This integral here, this set is gonna be arc sine of x. And then here, this derivative is a little more complicated. So let me get a little more space and we can work on this derivative. So now let's go ahead and we'll do the derivative of this thing. So first, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have the derivative of arc sine is gonna be one over square root of one minus this thing squared. So that's just gonna become one plus x over two. And then next, we're gonna need the chain rule on this part. So what I can do is, let me just kind of rewrite it and split it up. I'll write it as one half plus x over two to the one half. And then when you take the derivative of this thing, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have first power rule. So you're gonna have one half of one half plus x over two. And then this is gonna become minus one half. And then chain rule again, take the derivative in here, that's gonna give me another one half. So then what's gonna happen is one half times one half gives me a one fourth that I'll pull in front. And then for this thing, we can put this back in the denominator and write as one over square root of one plus x over two. But then we can put these square roots together and multiply this in to try to get some more simplification. So when I do that, we still have our one fourth out here. Then we'll put this all under one big square root. One plus x over two times one, it's gonna give me one plus x over two. And then multiplying in here, let's see what's gonna happen. We're gonna have minus, I'm gonna, we'll have a, a four here in the denominator, then we'll distribute one plus x squared, basically we're gonna have one plus two x plus x squared. Uh, let's just get a common denominator on this. So I'm gonna write this for one, for one plus x over two, let's write it as two plus two x over four. And now we have the common denominator with this. So we're gonna have this piece here, like so. Uh, That's a lot of simplification. <laughs> Then let's put all this together over four. So this is gonna become two plus two x, distributing the minus sign, minus one, minus two x, minus x squared. Two x's cancel, two times one is one, minus x squared over four. So let me just put this back over here and see what we have. And next we have four inside the square root. So if I pull that out, I can pull that out as a two, but then it's gonna go into the numerator. So we can do that and fix that. But then reducing two over four, I can put this back into our table as one over two times square root one minus x squared. So now I have a piece of the solution right here on the diagonals. 
Okay, so we'll put that part down. We have arc sine x times arc sine square root one plus x over two evaluated from zero to one. This last piece is gonna be an integral, so let's bring this down here, but we'll bring one half out in front. So this minus one half, still going from zero to one. And then now this is gonna become arc sine of x over square root of one minus x. And this is an integral here that we can do. Let's see if I can get some simplification on all this before we finish it off, because here we're just integrating one. So we do that, we integrate that one. So we integrate one, we get x evaluated from zero to one. That's just gonna be a one right here. Then here we can evaluate at one and zero. So first we're gonna have arc sine of one, that's gonna be pi over two here. Plugging in a one here, well we're gonna have two over two inside the radical, it's just gonna become a one. So again, arc sine of one, again, that's gonna be pi over two. Then evaluating zero, arc sine at zero is zero, um, and it doesn't really matter what this thing is gonna be because the arc sine of zero is gonna zero that out. So we're just gonna have a zero right there. And then we'll just bring down our integral. And now at this point, this right here is perfectly set up for u substitution because what we have here, let's just kind of create a one right here. The derivative of arc sine is one over one minus x squared. So what we can do is we can make our u equal to arc sine of x, and then our du is everything else, just one over square root one minus x squared dx. So now we can just go ahead with our u substitution. And what I'm gonna do, but let's simplify this first. We're gonna have this one. This is gonna become plus pi squared over four here. Zero is going away. We have our minus one half in front. Now first, updating our bounds, when we plug one in, arc sine of one is just pi over two, and then zero, arc sine of zero is just zero. And then this whole integral, this is actually just gonna transform into just u du. So now just going ahead and integrating this, this is actually gonna become u squared over two, and we just need to evaluate this from zero to pi over two. But when we evaluate at zero, that's gonna be nothing. So we just need to plug in pi over two. So we'll bring across this stuff. So we're gonna have our pi squared over four here, then minus one half, plugging in pi over two, that's gonna be another pi squared over four, but we have this still over, this is still over two right here. So cleaning this up a little bit, we have this coming along. This is actually gonna turn into minus pi squared over 16. We multiply everything together. But I can get a common denominator on the pi squared term, so I can write this one plus, we'll write this as four pi squared over 16 minus one pi squared over 16. So for my final solution to this, we just get one plus three pi squared over 16. Okay, there you have it. Really good problem from UNSW 2020. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.